Thank you. Good morning. Um, and thanks to Metis, who've invited me here today to talk about our product, uh, hypochlorous acid, and how it's used in, in disinfection. Unfortunately, our technical director isn't able to come today, so I hope I do her work justice. She's been the one working with Bupa and other large care home groups to produce the data that we'll be sharing with you today. Uh, what we're going to be talking about is hypochlorous acid. Some of you may be aware of it, some of you may not, but it's a biocide that is being used widely in lots and lots of applications, um, and particularly in healthcare and in care homes. We've been working with it as, as, a, as a molecule for the last 20 years across lots of different applications, uh, particularly focusing on the science uh, and the technical use of it rather than the sales side of it. Uh, so what is hypochlorous acid, first of all? It is one of the most effective biocides available. It is the same product that is produced by the human immune system to fight infection and to kill invasive organisms. Uh, it's gentle and powerful and represents a real monumental step forward in healthcare and hygiene. It is pH neutral at 7.2. Uh, as, so it's as gentle as water to humans, but it is 300 times more powerful than bleach. So it is a really, really effective disinfectant, um, as well as being used as hand, for hand sanitizing, etc. Uh, the company I work for, Aqualution, uh, is a very small business based in Duns in the Scottish borders, but we are the global leaders in the science, manufacture and application of hypochlorous and work with Metis Health who have a stand here uh, and upstairs today. Um, we started as a pharmaceutical business, uh, but now purely work within with hypochlorous bottling hypochlorous products for many different brands, which I'll come on to later, as well as the systems themselves that are used throughout the UK, Europe and the world for a range of different applications. We are also the hypochlorous European and UK regulatory dossier holders, meaning that every hypochlorous acid manufacturer or brand needs authorization from us to be on the market. It's a very heavily regulated um, industry, as you can imagine. Our technology is the only one that produces pure, stable hypochlorous, as I mentioned at pH 7.2. We're at 150 ppm and we have a 12-month shelf life. Hypochlorous acid was used in the First World War to fight infection, but it's very, very unstable. But we've managed to create a, a product that is stable for a minimum of 12 months. Um, Others may claim to be hypochlorous. This is where it sometimes the, the industry becomes a little bit muddied. Um, but regulations are becoming tighter. Uh, so some people may claim to be hypochlorous acid, but can sometimes be bleach at 500 ppm or just salty water. So you have to be really careful in, in terms of what product you, you're buying. As a business, we are 100% committed to problem solving. So customers uh, and businesses come to us with problems. So we're, pre we're, we're, we're wholly focused on research and development. Uh, and we've also, uh, in the, since the COVID pandemic, been working with Edinburgh University and have managed to create a hypochlorous gel, which is uh, being used, it's obviously a non-alcohol uh, hand sanitizing option. Hypochlorous acid itself is really, really effective. It kills 99.9999% of bacteria and 99.99% of viruses in seconds and even the hardest to kill. So with enveloped viruses such as coronavirus, very easy to kill, all the way up to bacterial spores, we're effective against all of them. And the, num the percentage number really does matter. So if you had a million bacteria, if a disinfectant has a 99.9% .9 kill rate, it will still leave a thousand bacteria left on the surface, which can repopulate to the original burden within a few hours, whereas ours is 99.9999, uh, leaving one, naught to one bacteria still alive. Um, we work across a number of applications as well as healthcare. Um, from swimming pools to skincare, um, from healthcare to food safety. And prior to COVID, our, actually our biggest area of work was food safety. So all Marks and Spencers, herbs, salads, fresh produce, anything that's bagged has been disinfected with our hypochlorous acid at point of picking. So our technical director is actually in Kenya working with Marks and Spencers on a project um, out there at the moment. We are, have been rigorously tested, so we have the full gamut of BSENs, uh, and that those, are those are tested in triplicate, so in clean, dirty, and filthy conditions. Um, and we have a kill time of on contact, uh, so no dwell time. And I'll come on to that with some of the tests and trials that we've been doing. 
We work with lots and lots and lots of companies globally, but just to name a few, as I've mentioned, Marks and Spencers already, and Waitrose, all their fresh produce is disinfected with our hypochlorous. But we also work with the NHS and have worked with Bupa, Department of Health and Social Care, and the London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine. Again, a trial that I'll touch on later today. And we also manufacture our own product but also that of other brands as well. So you may be familiar with some of these, particularly maybe the Nursen brand, which was created to help support nurses' hands that uh, after lots and lots of cleaning, obviously getting cracked hands, they were on Dragon's Den. I don't know if you've seen that, but we make their hand sanitizing product for them. But we also, are, as, as you can see, are in, are in eye care as well as animal care. So what about healthcare? Um, there are a huge array of products, uh, and we're not here to say whether we, you know, that a particular product is, is bad or shouldn't be used, but we get approached by customers with challenges such as toxicity issues, dwell time required to really have an effect, cost, but also environmental impact. We've been working in healthcare uh, for a number of years, uh, proving our technology and finding solutions to particular challenges. So customers come to us with specific issues, such as maybe fire hazard issues with, with some of the chemicals they're using, or respiratory or skin complaints with either staff or residents or patients. And over the past 15 years, we've invested over four million pounds in improving our technology and getting the right regulatory compliance. So uh, in, the time, in that time, we've worked with care, lots of care homes. We've worked with Bupa, as I've mentioned, NHS, London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine, and the World Health Organization. So why are more and more moving over to hypochlorous acid? Well, the benefits are clear. I've mentioned the 99.9999% of bacteria and the 99.99% of viruses, but it kills C. diff, MRSA, noroviruses, E. coli, just to name a few. We've got all the regulatory testing, and it has a very, very rapid kill time. But the, the brilliant part of hypochlorous is around that there's no toxicity. So there are no hazard warnings to humans or the environment. So very, very safe to be around. Um, it's ideal for busy high turnover environments. It literally is a spray and wipe, and I've got some data to, to show that um, coming up. So that if in a, in a busy environment where you don't have time to spray and leave it for five minutes, it works within that spray and wipe um, usage. It can also be used uh, not just in spray and wipe, but as I mentioned before, hand sanitizer. It's brilliant for odor control. It's used for wound care. It's used in laundry, and it's used in an environmental fogging, which I'll come on to. And we've proven time and time again that we are better, safer, and faster than some of the alternatives. We have a range of products. So uh, we, you know, we manufacture for many others, including Metis Health, who have a fantastic system, um, fogging system, which we'll, we'll talk about later. Our core product is called Salvasan. It's used in dentists, care homes, hospitals, schools, leisure facilities, and offices. Um, you'll notice with ours and also with the Metis product that it's in black bottles. That's really important for a hypochlorous product because it's very, very sensitive to UV and heat. So if you're buying a hypochlorous product, please make sure it's in a black bottle. Otherwise, it, it won't have the efficacy. The power is clear when we've done testing. So we initially worked with Bupa um, a few years ago to do a quick and dirty study, just comparing Dettol with Salvasan. So we samples were taken on a 10 centimeter squared surface laced with non-pathogenic E. coli. All surfaces were sprayed at the same time. Standard Dettol, um, when well, we use the instructions as on pack, so Dettol says leave for five minutes, and that's typical of a normal quat-based product. Um, so that's why there's a five-minute gap between the Dettol surface cleaner until we took the first swab, and then moving on to the Dettol multi-action, which was, is actually called a spray and wipe product, so we sprayed and wiped it to see what it would do. Um, the crux is that all products did achieve a three to four log reduction in bacteria. However, the hypochlorous, our product Salvasan, did it immediately, whereas others either achieved a lower kill rate or needed a longer contact time. So the Dettol uh, surface cleaner did manage to do a four log, but it took 11 minutes of being on the surface before it, before it managed to get that kill, whereas we got a four log within, with immediately. 
And as I've mentioned before, that 99.9%, those, those log reductions really, really matter because if you're leaving any bacteria or viruses on the surface, there is, there is the, the worry about cross-contamination and re-spreading of those bacteria. With these initial results, we then moved on to an in-home trial with Bupa. Um, so we were comparing uh, Salvasan with their standard quat-based product. We did it across four houses with the two products and a range of hand touch sites. Um, we swabbed, so the microbiology swabs, sprayed with Salvasan or the competitor product, and then re-swabbed all chosen surfaces daily for two weeks. So this was, a, this was a fairly long study. Swabs were cultured to compare levels of surface decontamination, so colony forming units, um, and sterile templates were used to measure an exact area. In general, um, the results show that the total number of bacteria recovered was higher after using the quat-based product than before cleaning, which was a real worry. And for Salvasan, it was lower. So you can see the average colony-forming unit count went down by 84,000 uh, with Salvasan in, in one of the houses and 11,000, whereas the infection rate increased with the quat-based product. We felt that this was due to contact time, so again, that spray and wipe issue, that having to leave Dettol or leaving a quat for, for a long period of time. And, um, and also, there's a, we find that there's a danger often with using lab-based results rather than real-life data, which is what we try and do in, in, every time we, we do any trials. And whilst the food industry has very strict guidelines on the levels of bacteria permitted in commercial pack houses and food factories, um, the health service has none of these things. So we've worked with two UK-based NHS clinical microbiologists who have proposed different standards of maximum levels of bacteria that should be present in any healthcare setting. Uh, one of those microbiologists have suggested a, a 2.5, uh, less than it should be less than 2.5 col colony forming units per centimeter squared, and the other has suggested five. So that's a tiny, tiny, tiny amount of bacteria. So very, very stringent. And when using our Dettol versus Salvasan um, data from the care home, our pass rate is obviously much, much higher than the quat-based product. We really believe in backing up uh, lab science with real world science, which is why we're more often than not out doing trials, whether it be in care homes or whether it be in hospital settings or food factories. Uh, so that's why our technical director is never around because she's always, she's always off doing trials. Um, it shows in the real world contact times are a real challenge for most disinfectants. And we also know there's a huge problem of mechanical spread of pathogens during the cleaning process from one area to another. We also got some anecdotal feedback from the Bupa, Bupa trial that the cleaners liked the smell. It's a, it's a faint whiff of swimming pools, um, as well as noting, noticing a massive impact on urine. So hypochlorous acid is really good at getting rid of urine smells because it oxidizes the ammonia rather than traditional air fresheners that maybe just mask the smell temporarily. And our product can be used on, on soft furnishings, um, sofas, carpets, uh, uh, curtains without any problem at all. We really stand by our science and the, the, or ever, the, the brief uh, data that I've just shown you has been published uh, and I'm more than happy to share that published paper with you that was undertaken with Bupa. Um, just speak to me afterwards and I'm more than happy to email that to you. So our hypochlorous product was rolled out across Bupa um, following the study and it had a massive impact. So this was a number of years ago and obviously through procurement, we're not in Bupa at the moment, uh, but evidence did show that uh, taking 2010 as an example, the lost bed days were 180,000 lost bed days across their estate due to infection, uh, which reduced to 653 once they had put in hypochlorous acid as their disinfection spray. This is a spray and wipe protocol. So moving on from just spray and wipe, we were approached at the start of the pandemic by a northeast uh, care home group to understand, to try and understand whether environmental fogging would help uh, within their care home setting. Fogging is, is obviously 
become big news since since COVID, and there are lots there are products here today that that do lots that do environmental fogging, and you've probably been approached by by lots of others. We've been working with fogging as a company for many many years. So again, going back to the food industry, every single berry, whether it be blueberries, raspberries, blackberries, um, that are used by Marks and Spencers in desserts have, have to be fogged with our hypochlorous acid. Uh, it reduces the surface by a burden of bacteria and especially norovirus. A number of years ago, there was, a, there was an outbreak of norovirus which was um, shown to come from raspberries. Um, and it, 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 so the norovirus, it gets rid of norovirus and other bugs that are transferred from pickers' hands onto the fruit. And if you can imagine, berries are really, really hard to wash. As soon as you put water on raspberries, they disintegrate. So we've been using that fogging system um, for a number of years with Marks and Spencer's supply chain, and we're the only company to, to be approved to, de to decontaminate fresh produce that's too fragile to be washed. So we took the same technology and we took it into a care home to see what the results would be. Uh, so, as I said, we worked with the Northeast Based Care Home Group. They were already using Salvasan hypochlorous acid in, in a spray and wipe format, but they just wanted to know if environmental fogging could further support their efforts against COVID. We chose, um, that's the trial, just information I've just said. They were already using spray and wipe, as I say. We chose three areas to mist. The communal dining room, the bedroom, and the bathroom, and these were chosen randomly on arrival. Each area was swabbed the, and the microbiology uh, uh, recorded. It was misted for, the room was misted for 15 minutes, left for five minutes, re-entered, and then swabbed. We actually did this, uh, this um, fogging in situ, uh, human-operated, um, which is totally safe for hypochlorous acid. Swabs were immediately sent to an independent lab for micro, uh, microbial analysis. Um, so the dining room, just some photos of the dining room areas that we uh, that we we swabbed. So just to show the blue scribbly lines is actually where we took the swabbing. So we could just so we could do the pre and post in the same position. That is uh, the fogging in process. That is a handheld one, but we do have the Metas Health solution is an automated um, system. So looking at the results, you can see the pre and post fogging um, uh, colony forming units as well as the log reduction. So you can see the log reduction change. Um, we tend to use median as a result rather than mean. Um, mean average is great when looking at a range of data that comply with normal distribution patterns, but median is far more useful for microbiology or any set of data where one massive value could skew the whole data set. Uh, the results seem to indicate that there were some areas that were not getting frequent enough attention by the cleaning staff, so the external windowsill, the internal windowsill, um, the sideboard, uh, but there were other areas that were being cleaned that were cleaned really well. Um, despite uh, despite the mist, despite the, them not being cleaned, so that's the pre, uh, the mist still managed to reduce it. So if you look at the win the internal window cell as an example, it went from <coughs> seven million colony forming units of bacteria down to less than ten. So that was the six log reduction. There was a slight anomaly in a, in a couple of areas, um, and you'll see particularly the sideboard. We swabbed particularly next to a real, it was visibly dirty, uh, and we wanted to see what the mist would do to a visibly dirty area that hadn't been, actually hadn't been cleaned. Um, and it did reduce it. It didn't reduce it by a, by a log, but it was quite interesting to see that it did reduce it without any physical clean. We then did physically clean the sideboard afterwards and did spray and wipe and re-swabbed it and it was down to less than 10. We then moved on to the bedroom. So again, just showing different areas of the bedroom that we looked at. And again, the results. So particularly the, the headboard uh, was particularly dirty um, before we swabbed. Uh, and this was just using the misting. This wasn't using any mechanical cleaning or any spray and wipe. Uh, it went down to, it had a two log reduction um, on a particularly dirty surface. But you'll also see the windowsill and table surface um, reduced, reduced pretty well. And also you'll see from the light switch, it went down from, to, from 480 to less than 10. So it was less than 10 across most of them. In general hygiene and, and cleaning efficacy, I must say within this care home, 
was at a very high standard, but what we found that misting conferred additional benefits to areas that had, that had been missed. And I just wanted to reiterate that the domestic staff did not know that we were visiting to do the trial, and these were results all based on as-found conditions, and we did it after breakfast, but before cleaning. Um, particularly the, the bathroom, so again, we took these, these spaces within the bathroom. Uh, the, the hygiene levels pre-cleaning were incredibly good already. So you'll see that the, the colony forming units were largely 10 or under. Uh, this is pre-misting with the hypochlorous acid. So, so obviously didn't have much to, to, to have to disinfect in that room. In terms of the results, the existing regime within that care home group we found was very effective already with very low levels of microbial burden recording. What we found is that misting does add benefit. So it had a mean and median one log reduction to the existing regime. So there was a kind of added benefit. Um, but importantly, the feedback from that customer that we worked with for a number of years is that the combination of protocols, so the spray and wipe and the misting, as well as other things that they were putting in place during the COVID pandemic, uh, demonstrably uh, resulted in lower morbi morbidity and mortality figures during um, the COVID crisis across, you know, compared with the national average. So they had much less um, mortality rates, much, much lower mortality rate. And though only part of the overall management of infection control through the pandemic, it was nevertheless a contributing factor to promote resident safety. And the care home group in question continues to use salve center spray and wipe as well as environmental fogging throughout their care homes as an absolute coverall situation. So that's what we've done in care homes, um, but we do other work in healthcare as well, just to touch on. Um, so we have worked with Metis Health, who, as I say, are here today with a, they've got a fantastic fogging machine system that uses our hypochlorous acid. Um, and in 2020, we were given the opportunity to trial the misting of, of the hypochlorous acid within a pediatric ward of a large NHS hospital. It actually resulted in, there were two trials within, um, I think I can say it's Betsy Cadwallader um, NHS Trust in North Wales. Uh, and the aim was to measure the effect of, of misting hypochlorous acid on the microbial loading across a range of hand touch surfaces. Um, as a direct comparison to hydrogen peroxide vapour, which is very toxic and you need to seal rooms before they're fogged and then you have to leave them for about three hours afterwards before anybody can go in but just because of safety concerns. So there was a real issue around the speed of turnaround of cleaning and disinfecting and the speed of u the usage of, of particularly operating theatres and other rooms and the, having the movement of patients. So we... We, we, we did the two trials um, with great success and the, the Metis Health um, Hydra system with our hypochlorous acid has now been rolled out and has completely replaced hydrogen peroxide vapour. Um, and I know Metis are talking, taking that, those results and talking to a number of other NHS trusts to roll it out as, there as well, particularly because of the speed and the safety of hypochlorous over the HPV. Um, Metis Health, that's their machine, which you can see upstairs if you want to see the actual system itself. We also have done a, a project with the London School of Hydrogen and Tropical Medicine, which I mentioned earlier. Um, it was funded by the World, World Health Organization, um, and it was a um, comparison of using our hypochlorous acid against bleach in Nigerian hospitals. So we're trying to take our kind of first world technology to lower middle income countries to improve their disinfection and their, and their health care. Um, we took a concentration of their bleach at 500 ppm and our hypochlorous acid, um, which they refer to as electrolyzed water, it's the same, it's the same, um, it's the same thing, um, used in maternity, male and female wards. And the results showed that, that electrolyzed water performs similarly to bleach, but at far lower concentrations. So you don't need as much of it. Um, we also estimate that if we're looking at an in situ, so we can put our machines into care homes and into hospitals, it would be 10 times cheaper than using the bleach that they're, that they're currently procuring. It's less corrosive to skin and hat, skin and materials. There's none of those safety concerns. Um, much better environmental um, product uh, and used for a wide 
array of applications. So they are looking at it for wounds, for burns, and for medical equipment disinfection, as well as surface um, disinfection. Um, we are also, we're always running projects and looking at new opportunities for hypochlorous. Um, and at the very, very start of COVID, we undertook a trial to understand the capability of using hypochlorous acid to disinfect PPE, to try and reduce single use PPE. Um, and we did a lot trial on live SARS-CoV-2 um, virus, which showed that hypochlorous does kill it on PPE. We are now working with a number of PPE manufacturers to roll that out to try and create reusable PPE that gets disinfected with hypochlorous. So that's still, that's still ongoing. Um, we also have a number of medical devices. So it's the same, it's the same liquid, but uh, they've been authorized as a dental waterline cleaner. So it's the, it's the chemical that goes through the dental chair um, to clean that, and it's also used as a dental mouthwash. And we are also currently undertaking a trial with NHS Lanarkshire to show how well hypochlorous works to treat diabetic ulcers. And if we can treat diabetic ulcers, then we can probably treat most, most wounds. So that's, a, that's something that's ongoing. So just, in, just a quick summary of kind of the benefits of hypochlorous acid. So again, great kill rate against viruses and bacteria, works in seconds. Um, completely alcohol-free, pH neutral, non-irritating to skin, effective for human health, for animal health, for food safety and for the environment, powerful and natural odour eliminator, particularly important within care homes, fully authorised with the biocide product regulator as well as HSE, absolutely no toxicity or hazard warnings on pack, um, and we've also managed to create a gel which is, which is really helping uh, with uh, hand sanitizer options that, uh, that don't have alcohol in them.